Hello, and welcome to the first video in the series on electronics fundamentals. What you're seeing on screen right now is the circuit for a differential amplifier made out of transistors, specifically MOSFETs. When I was first learning about analog electronics, I'd open my textbook and I'd see a circuit like this one. I was very intrigued by it and mystified. One of the big questions I always had was, what was this used for anyway? I'd open my textbook or search online and I'd find these very complicated circuits titled how to make an amplifier or how to make a switching circuit. However, it was hard to bridge the gap between the simple circuits I was learning in class and the applications I would find online that were beyond my understanding at the time. I could only imagine the cool things I'd be able to do once I understood this stuff. What I wanted to do was create a series of videos explaining the theory of analog electronics through application, rather than just the theory alone. To begin this series, we are going to be designing a simple flashlight. In our case, we're going to use the LED circuit to design the system. If you're brand new to electronics, this is what's called the circuit schematic also known as a circuit diagram, which is commonly used to show how all the components in the circuit are connected together. In our case, we've got three components, a voltage source, which is usually a battery, a resistor, and an LED, also known as a light emitting diode. At the bottom is the ground reference, which we use as a reference in measurements to determine what's going on in the circuit. First, let's begin with the resistor. We can connect the resistor to a voltage source as shown, and what you will find is that it obeys Ohm's law. Voltage equals resistance times current, or V equals Ri. What this says is that the voltage across the resistor is equal to the current going through the resistor times its resistance. You can determine this through measurement too. By varying the voltage with the power supply, and measuring the current with an ammeter, you will see a curve like this pop up. To relate this back to our flashlight circuit, let's add the LED too and see what happens. Let's try a voltage of three volts with a power supply. We see the current moving through the circuit. If we increase the voltage to five volts, then the current gets faster. The slope of the line between these two points is the resistance of the resistor in the circuit. We see this also controls how much current is going through the LED. The way the LED works is that as current goes through the circuit, through the LED, it emits light proportional to the amount of current going through it. As more current goes through the LED, the more light we are going to get out of it. More current equals brighter LED. So we can use the resistor kind of like a knob. Let's try decreasing the resistance. We see the LED gets brighter. If we try increasing the resistance, then the LED gets dimmer, which makes sense since it has less current going through it. So this is a resistor, an actual resistor, and this is a potentiometer, which acts as a variable resistor. We could see on the multimeter in kilo ohms how this resistor varies as I turn the knob. So we could use this as our knob to control our brightness of our flashlight circuit. Now the way we're gonna do this is with a breadboard. And, and if you haven't seen a breadboard before, essentially it acts as the connector for prototype circuits. So the way it works, I've got a spare right here, is that all these holes are connected in a specific configuration. And if you remove the back, you can see exactly how they're connected. These rows on the top are connected by a long strip. And each of these rows right here of five are connected by these shorter strips of metal. So let's connect it together. So you could see as I turn the knob on the potentiometer, the brightness changes. As I increase the resistance, the LED dims, and as I decrease the resistance, the LED gets brighter. 
Now there's a thing that we need to know about LEDs, which is how much current we can put through them. And for that, I've got the data sheet. So right here, it says that our maximum amount of forward current that we can put through the LED is 20 milliamps. And the nominal voltage that these LEDs are usually on is around two volts. So we're gonna use this in our calculations to figure out what size resistor we need for our flashlight. Using the information from the data sheet that came with the LEDs, we can determine what size resistor we need to get the current or brightness that we want from the LED. The data sheet showed us that 20 milliamps is too much current for the LED, and that is where it might break. The first thing we need to determine is what resistance gets us too much current through the LED. To analyze the circuit, it's a little easier to understand if we morph it a little bit by moving the resistor over here, like this. What this shows us is that the voltage across the battery is equal to the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the LED. This is kind of like looking at heights. The total height is equal to height 1 plus height 2 put together. What's actually going on here is that the voltage between the ground and this point has to be the same no matter how you measure it. So the voltage across the battery has to be the same as the voltage across these two components. Just like how the total height up to a certain point must be the same no matter which path you take up the mountain. We can solve for the resistance as follows. Subtracting the voltage of the LED to the other side of this equation, we get the battery voltage minus the voltage across the LED is equal to the voltage of the resistor, which we know by Ohm's law is the resistance times the current through the resistor. Dividing the current over to the other side, we end up with an equation for the resistor. What I'm using to power the circuit are two AA batteries, which equates to about three volts. And in the data sheet, it said that the on voltage of the LED was around two volts to 2.2 volts. We're gonna use two volts. And the max current the LED could handle was 20 milliamps. So putting this all together, we get 50 ohms is our minimum resistance that we can use in the circuit before we damage the LED. In our experiment, we saw some resistance values to get our desired brightness of the LED. About 10 kilo ohms was pretty dim, and around one kilo ohm was pretty bright. Now, we can solve for the current through the LED similarly. Again, solving for the voltage across the resistor and using Ohm's law, we can instead divide the resistance over to the other side of the equation to get an equation for the current through the circuit and in turn through the LED. Plugging in one kilo ohm, we get about one milliamp through the LED. Plugging in 10 kilo ohms, we get 0.1 milliamps. And if we want a bright LED, we could use 100 ohms, which gets us 10 milliamps which is about half of our maximum current that we could put through the LED without damaging it. Thus, we have three settings. With a 1 kilo ohm resistor, we get a bright LED. With a 100 ohm resistor, we get an even brighter LED. And with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, we get a dimmer setting. Let's take a look at what this brightness actually looks like on the bench. What I've got here is a 100 ohm, 1 kilo ohm, and 10 kilo ohm resistor connected to three separate LEDs so we can see the brightness. Now, the 100 ohm resistor is making that LED so much brighter than the other two that it's actually affecting the brightness of my test bench. I've got a test circuit here where we're able to measure the current going through the LED and the voltage across the LED So I've connected a 100 ohm resistor to the test circuit and we can see that we're getting about 
7.7 milliamps at 2.13 volts. And the current's varying a lot here where the voltage is relatively stable and that's because of the contacts of the breadboard is varying the resistance just enough to cause a significant change. At one kilo ohm, we're getting 1.25 milliamps at 1.85 volts. And it's a lot more stable because the variation in how good my contacts are is a lot less than the resistance of the one kilo ohm resistor. At 10 kilo ohms, we're getting 0.15 milliamps at 1.73 volts. And what you might be noticing here is we assume that the voltage across the LED would always be two volts. In our measurement, that's simply not the case. So to account for this, we can make a slightly better model. On a VI characteristic plot, we get that a constant voltage sink looks like this. And plotting a couple data points from our test setup, we see that the LED is not constant. Applying linear regression, we get that the voltage across the LED with respect to current is equal to 0.072 times I plus 1.84. To give a little bit more perspective, the voltage across the LED is equal to some resistance, Ri, plus a voltage. You can see that we have an Ohm's law here. Now, adding units to this, we get that there's 0.072 kilo ohms as part of our LED, or 72 ohms with a 1.84 constant voltage sink. I took some time and plotted even more points. You can see even this approximation isn't completely accurate. For reference on the brightness, I added in the resistors that we measured, and you could see that there is a lot of variation from the one kilo ohm to the 100 ohm. The equation is only accurate in this region, which is good enough as an approximation for a flashlight circuit. However, if you were to try and use the same equation over here for a more complicated application, it wouldn't be sufficient. Let's take what we learned and apply it to our circuit. We can replace the LED with two components we already know, a resistor and a voltage sink. Dividing the voltage source up into two parts, we can divide the circuit into two parts. A voltage divider, which we'll learn about in the next video, is where all the power variation in our circuit comes from. Power equaling voltage times current. And down here, a voltage sink, or a power sink. What looking at our circuit from a power perspective will show us is that there's a trade-off between battery life and the brightness of our flashlight. See you in the next video.